Welcome back to Pathologic Classic HD. I'm basically running around the town with my head cut off, screaming at everybody to, Oh my god, please listen, the plague is about to hit the town, do something. And unfortunately, almost nobody's listening. And I think the plague is probably going to be upon us tomorrow, although I'm not sure. But in the meantime, I'm kind of just stuck in limbo, just talking to people, trying to get a get the lay of the land, and attempting, so far futilely, to do something. The next person I'm going to visit is Yulia, see if she has anything to say about the situation, since she is a clear thinker. A rational thinker, apparently. And along the way, I'm going to stop at the town hall and see if there's anything there for me. Then after that, I'm going to visit the Subaroffs, the third ruling family. I've already spoken with the Canes and the, um, the Olgimskis. Neither of them will be convinced of the plague, but maybe the Subaroffs will be. Oh, and of course, always stop for little girls to see if they have ammo. Ah, you do, and exactly my kind of ammo, too. Please take this needle. Thank you, have a nice day. I want to stockpile as much ammo as possible, but I also need food, because my hunger is very high. So creepy. There's nobody at Town Hall. Nobody. But it's unlocked. That's the weirdest part. It's unlocked, but there's nobody here. You know what's even weirder, though, is I think just like a lot of the other buildings, it's smaller on the inside than it is on the outside. Way smaller. This is just two relatively small rooms. Unless... oh wait, unless this goes to a separate wing? Oh, it's a separate place. Okay, that makes more sense. Oh. What happened here? This is like jail cells, obviously, but why do they have dead bodies in jail cells? Shouldn't those be at the... I, I don't know, mortician's office, Ruben's place, something. Oh. Oh, God. I can open these? Can I open these? Okay. No. Good. I don't think I want to go in there. I wonder if those are plague victims. Next stop, Yulia. Oh, wait. Oh, food! Sweet. I need food. But first... Bins. Hello, clone. Milk. Be careful with this product. Milk is very good for one's health, but its origin means there is always a big risk. Women say that recently cows have been producing a clear ichor, and dark clots have been found in steamed milk. Farm animals cannot be trusted these days. Oh. Wait, this fresh meat is 3,300. Wait, this bread is 1650. Holy shit. Okay, either the price of food has gone up severely just within one day or this person is trying to rip me off. I'm not paying that. Hell no. Thank <laughs> you. 
What? What is going on in the town? I wish I could go out and see for myself. Don't even think about it. I need to broadcast a general order tomorrow. Everyone is to stay in, or be arrested and made to stay in. Okay, fruitful conversation. Let's go to the Superovs. I'm sure they'll have something to say. Just out of curiosity, I want to see what sorts of stuff a closed store sells. Needle. Gloves. Boots. God, those are so freaking expensive. 8,800. Thought I had a lot of money, but maybe not. I suppose you want to trade, sir. Got a smoke. Uh. Sorry, I don't smoke. I don't even know what this dialogue option is. Take a look here. Can you repair this device for me? It keeps missing the target from three yards away. And sharpen this blade, too. Oh, he can repair stuff. Repair cost 460. Hell no! Don't you think you're in the clear? So you have seen for yourself that people differ greatly. Sad, but true. Some of them shine like stars. Others are nothing but step grass. There is only one thing that makes them different. Truly outstanding people care for others and are even prepared to give up their lives for their fellow men. People of the crowd only care about themselves. I have. Strange how the size of their heart. The size of their hearts corresponds with the size of their mansions. If one were to believe you, of course. People will be willing to give up their lives for you, dear bachelor. Only to give you another chance to avert the forthcoming catastrophe. That is how you'll get to know them. Tell me. Will you accept the sacrifices? No. I don't accept anyone's sacrifices. My job is to save human lives rather than waste them. The life of a person can become the fee you'll have to pay to see the events more forward. Unless you'd be willing to contribute to them, of course. Their motives will also differ. But their ability to give up their lives for a higher cause stays the same. Plague is the measure of humanity.
So either they have to die for me, or I have to die for them. Is that what she's saying? I only hope they wouldn't do it without my knowledge. My eyes look just like buttons, don't they? Using the pain of those who cannot be saved is also a worthy feat, isn't it? The military arithmetics is a double-edged knife. Is a doomed person already crossed out from the list of survivors? Even the dead deserve care. What are you talking about? It's not a good idea to try to take away from the living for the sake of the dead. But perhaps you should share a part of yourself with them. It will pay back in spades. He who helps the dying pass on painlessly is sparing the world unnecessary suffering. We respect that here. Being considerate may even help you atone for a murder. So if you kill someone and then help several, peop uh, several others pass on, the murder will be forgiven. I'll keep that in mind. I need morphine. I wonder where my girl is now. But she will fear no evil. She is a pure soul. Are you daydreaming? Are you talking about a dead child of yours? It's a weird thing to say. This... Speak with the other Zubarov. I've got a firm hand. So, yesterday you told the Canes that we may... that we may possibly have to face an epidemic. I believe you, Bachelor. In all honesty, I am one of the few people that do. The rest are astonishingly blind. I know, right? Excellent. The most important thing is that I've managed to persuade you. We still have a few precious hours to stop the disease from spreading, just like Isidore Barak did a few years ago. We need to declare a state of emergency. But I can't do anything. My hands are tied. Who's in charge of maintaining order in the town? I am. For many years, the Superovs have held executive power in their hands. The problem is that, until now, we haven't had a serious reason to enforce it. In times of peace, the scale tipped to favor the legislative branch, that is, the Canes. What is preventing you from using your power now? The authority belongs to the... Tri... Triumvirate. The Triumvirate that is presided over by the patron, the head ruler. But now that Simon is dead, his place is vacant. Georgie and Vlad are too afraid that the old balance might shift. But these tragic events are reconfiguring the local power landscape. Okay. So it used to be Simon that had this power. Now that he's dead, nobody wants to step up and actually have power. And if I declare a state of emergency at my own discretion, there will be a feud, a civil strife. I need them to acknowledge me, at least. To take further action, I need the Olgimsky's money and the Kane's standing. I need Big Vlad's cunning and Georgie's energy. Well, there's some, there are actually quite a few misspells in this translation. Georgie's ennegree. I also need their servants to follow my orders. Why won't they make concession, concessions to you? It's glaringly obvious that every minute counts, else the town will die. What are they going to rule then? It's their damned infantilism. One of them is a greedy child. Another is a whimsical one. They think that if they admit that there is an outbreak in town, it will actually happen. But as long as they refuse to believe it, it simply doesn't exist. It's either megalomania or a cunning calculation. What can I do to convince them? Find proof. Any proof. Immediately. Well, Reuben tampers with the body, and he'll be busy with it for a long time since he's not a professional. 
the initiative will be lost. Help me, Denkovsky. Find factual proof, show it to them, and they won't be able to deny the truth any longer. I would love to, but how? Yeah, how? I've asked several people I trust for help. Perhaps they've already offered to help you too? Some of them have sent word to me already. Furthermore, Anna, the current owner of the Willows, is positive that she knows how to find irrefutable proof of the outbreak. She needs a competent person to assist her. Okay, good, finally. Something concrete I can freaking do to find proof. Fine, uh, I'll speak to her. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Anything more to Without say? Without the mistresses, the rulers struggle f Nope. Finally, I can do something concrete. What time is it? Eh, it's like 1.30. I don't have that much time to spare. It's not late in the day, but, you know, like half the day's gone. So let's not dawdle. Although I will stop by any food place I see along the way. Ooh, here's the food place. This isn't the same food place as before, is it? Nope, this is different. Oh shit. The prices are the same. That's stolen goods, apparently. This jar could contain tomatoes, young onion bulbs, peppers, or beans. All are good for one's health in different measure. Am I really gonna have to pay that much for a freaking can of vegetables? Jesus. Well, at least my stuff is worth a decent amount. 720 for a bandage. 432 for a single revolver round. God. I need food. I really do need food. I'm gonna buy it. Let's see what that does for my hunger. So my hunger right now is at like 80%. Oh my god, are you kidding me? It's like fucking nothing. I'm gonna have to chug a billion waters before I go to sleep. My god. Can you abuse waters like that? Can you just sleep all day and just drink tons of water? This is Anna's place, right? Yep. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mind me, I'm just rifling through your goods. Have you met ominous people in circus costumes here? Um, yes I have, actually. Have you too? <laughs> oh, that is really too much. Who the hell are you? Why have you donned this dreadful outfit? That's precisely the question I was going to ask you. I am Anna Angel. You might have heard of me already. Oh, I used to be a famous singer. You can't even imagine the stages I used to be the star of. I'm Dankovsky. Daniil Dankovsky. You might have heard about me too. I'm the head of the... Th Fanatica Laboratory. I thought so. I knew someone like that would pay me a visit very soon. How horrible. What's horrible? 
Everything. Everything's horrible. You came to, you know, after me, right? What? I have no idea what you're talking about. Whose child was crying there? So what do you think? Is it unstoppable? I've started saving up pills. Tell me which ones work better. I've come on Subaru's behalf. Real proof is required for the rulers to devolve their power to him and begin cooperating. And you know where to find it, don't you? Incidentally, are you aware that no one believes you? Seems like Subarov the Despot was the only significant person to have sided with you. He could have prevented the disaster, but it's too late now. And why the hell doesn't anyone believe me, I wonder? Yesterday they were all busy harping on about my educated opinion being the ultimate truth to them. Oh, it's all such a mess. We've been living a very quiet life for a while. We're not used to... A lot of people were killed yesterday, you know. I still can't believe it. It's like a pagan demon had passed through the town, possessing the crowd, committing foul murder, and somehow remains invisible. So what was it you wanted to tell me? Disturbing rumors were heard from different districts all night. Mostly inconsequential, and mostly driven by everyone's fear of the man-eater and the mob's crazed vigilantism. It's all rubbish. But I've found several reports disconcerting. Which ones? They were brought to me by second-hand dealers. I've started saving up medicine, you know. Ah, never mind. Anyway, Everyone's noticed an unusual silence, an occasional strange animal behavior, especially that of dogs. And there were packs of rats, too. The hunchback said that such things are often left unnoticed in the general panic. Hmm. Yes, it does resemble the first signs of an outbreak. But silence could have been caused by fear. Dogs always get anxious when people do. As for rats, there is a slaughterhouse nearby, isn't there? There were other signs too. Frightening scribblings and repulsive oily spots on walls here and there. Raspy breathing that could only belong to giant lungs can be heard by the silent houses. They say the shapnak, the embodiment of the disease, is breathing poisonous air leaving her fat on the walls as she walks by. Show me where these places are. The children know which houses are infected. There were three of them, four tops. You know what? Talk to Capella, the young Olgimskaya. Children are drawn to her like moths to a flame. They tend to hang around everywhere and report everything to her. She's at the lump now, and tell her I will share my pills with the children. <laughs> I love this line here. It's nice to have a network of little agents all over the place. Putting aside the fact that all of them are also little deathbringers now, of course. <laughs> little deathbringers. Oh. To the lump we go. Anything else to speak to her about? Is Harusp explaining to get rich? Nope. What's the best way there? Straight and then to the right. Food. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be overpriced here too, but just in case it isn't, let's check. Another clone. Yep, overpriced. <laughs> Cracker. It's cheap. Sure, I'll take it. I'm sure that will restore much of my hunger. Let's see how much it does. 
Uh, okay, so it's there. I'm gonna have to memorize where it was. And now it's... I, I don't freaking know. I think it barely did anything. How much food does this guy need? Like... Five loaves of bread? Jesus. People don't need that much food, man. Hello, youth. I think I should buy up as much of this stuff as possible. Oh, I don't have anything to trade, though. Nothing that she wants, just a flower. And that's not worth enough. To the lumps. Or the lump, rather. Sorry, not plural. You're not the right person. Youth! Hello? This is in my quests. This is where I'm supposed to go, right? Wait, was it actually the young daughter? I didn't think that was her name. It seems like it's... unless there's like another door or something, I think that's her. Is it indeed you? Father has been avoiding me lately. Strange. Oh, it is you. Victoria. I need your help. But of course, how can I help you? Have you by any chance heard of anything unusual going on in town? From the children, perhaps? You must be aware that I'm looking for Isidore's murderer. I was actually about to share this with you. Little kids come to me in flocks from throughout the town. They're all scared. The youngest are afraid of Shabnak. The older ones tell me that there is something wrong with certain houses. And who knows what's inside. I can say your intelligence is quite competent. Which houses are those? Children are lovely reporters. They remember all that's crucial to them in great detail, and leave out everything else completely. As for this case, my friends have noticed a staggering amount of details. And yet, they have forgotten to tell me the most important part. So I can only give you a rough direction to the area. Like it could ever be simple. What details have they noticed, then? The ones you would expect the least. The silence. The moaning chorus from below the ground. Lamentations from behind the windows. Dogs banding together into packs and eating soil. The unusual smell in the air, as if a stinking cloth was burned. A friend of a friend's friend hasn't come to an appointment. I see. So what do I do? How am I supposed to look for these silent houses? It's in Earth. The troubled southern part of the town. You could use a guide down there. Find a boy named Sticky. He'll show you the houses that have fallen silent. He will also tell you what is where, so that you don't get confused. Thank you. One more thing. Lara was looking for you. She needs your help with something. Everyone does. Lara. I've seen her already. Have I? Who's Lara? I don't remember. Uh, I'll go see her. There's Sticky's place. Hold on, is it actually noted in my quests that I need to speak to Laura? Or Lara, rather? No, it's not. Okay, I'm gonna write that down to make sure I don't forget it. Lara. I don't remember who that is. Was it mentioned anywhere? Oh. 
The shelter? Laura Revel's house. No, I've, I've not even been there. Well, it's pretty close by, so I guess I should go there and see what she wants. Let's go. Some more revolver ammo? Yes, please. Um. Mm. Oh, all the stuff I have to trade is worth too much, though. Nah, sorry, kid. Forwards, to the right, at the end of Town Hall, then to the left. Hey there. How you doing? Again, pills. Once again, I've only got the flower to trade. Actually, wait. I think I might be able to buy the pills with the flower, but I definitely can't buy the uh, by the marijuana or whatever it's called. Another lockpick. I don't think I want two though. I've not even used one. What about you, boy? do you like? You like blades. Okay. Anything worth two? Nope. But I can get one revolver ammo. I think I'm close to Lara's place. Oh, in fact, I'm already at it. Cozy place. Looks like lots of food. Theoretically. I'm guessing all these are empty. Looks like they're preparing to serve a lot of food, at least. Who is Lara? Ah, must be you. Was it a month ago? I can't remember. You are the person that came to Maria Cana in a dream. I recognized you straight away. My name is Lara Revel, and this is the shelter. You are always welcome here. My name is Daniil. Daniil Denkovsky. Let's be friends now. I prefer being friends with everyone. You always have guests, but your face is sad. Well, yes, I'm a mistress of this house after all. That doesn't mean I'm a mistress, mind you, not with a capital M. I won't ever become one. But I can also serve people to the best of my ability. Oh, the capital M mistresses are the ones that are clairvoyant, right? So I guess she's saying she isn't? Or wait, no, she said she saw me in a dream, no? So she is clairvoyant. Who are the capital M mistresses, then? The mistresses of the town. We call them the dream mistresses. Kena, Olgimskaya, and Subarova. Now, after Victoria's and Nina's departure, it's their daughters who are trying to see the future. They are far less impressive than their mothers for now, of course. Maria is probably the best. Hmm. 
These clairvoyants terrify me. The things you'll see here are not subject to comprehension. They'll burst into your everyday routine like the horrors of your childhood that have come to life. They'll thrash your logical thinking and disrupt every single part of you. The sharp mind of an analyst won't be able to wrap around them. You can't even imagine. I'm going to be a bit of an egotistical person here. I can imagine them very well. That is what I have the sharp mind of an analyst for. Haruspex was offered a hundred thousand for his inheritance. He refused. There's panic everywhere, right? The prices are rising by the hour. Not to mention that we haven't received any eatables for several months now. The shops are empty. The people are eager to buy anything at exorbitant prices. Everyone is trying to prepare themselves for the epidemic. Yes, it's absolutely absurd. I think the prices have gone up threefold. We need to buy eatables, a lot of eatables. It will be a challenge even today, but I fear that tomorrow it will simply become unfeasible. How much do you need? I need a lot. I want at least 12 people to be able to survive for a month in the house that will become a shelter. With minimal expenses, of course. My friends and those who help me set the place up will be accepted in. And what did you do to make that, uh, what did you do to make that happen? I've collected all the money I could find. I've sent couriers on a shopping mission, trying to find the best prices. Now I need to collect the most important donations, from the Canes and the Olgimskis. Yulia agreed to make a donation too. I'm going to see them now and then I'll join this crazy shop rush. You're not going anywhere. It's a general rule, Lara. Or Lara. Those who stay in survive. Those who go around shopping die. Get it? I do. But I'm used to doing everything myself, and I don't really have a choice right now. I will make the purchases. I have to do a lot of walking today anyway. Tell me what you need. I need to collect Vlad the Younger's, Yulia's, and Maria Kana's donations. Tell them that you are acting on my behalf. Then you'll need to find the best prices and buy as much bread, smoked meat, and fish as possible. Only the products that don't go bad quickly. You'll need to take it all to the House of the Living. I'll show you where it is. Okay, this is going to be noted for me, right? Or should I write this down? I'm going to write this down just in case. Alright, I've got it written down. Uh, where can I find the best prices at the moment? I heard some shops are planning to sell stuff for bargain prices from time to time. Ask the townsfolk. They should know. I see. Thank you. And forgive me for burdening you with time-consuming and mundane errands. But one day... A lot of people will be very thankful that we've managed to take care of the vital issues beforehand. This work is neither very time-consuming nor mundane, and it's definitely more than a mere errand. It's a very important mission. Indeed it is. Although, saying it's not time-consuming is definitely not true. It is going to be time-consuming, but it is important. Hello, hello, hello. Good day, good day. Good day, goodbye. I guess I should just do that now. So I've actually, yeah, wow, I really don't have that much time now. I've got a lot of things to do. I've got to go collect all the donations, find the best pr place to buy stuff, buy the stuff, deliver to the House of the Living, and I need to go... I need to go to Sticky, who's my guide, and will show me the houses I need to visit to see which ones are infected and try to find proof, and uh, holy shit, I've got a lot of things to do. What do I do first? Okay, well, once I find proof, I'm gonna bring it to the canes, right? So I suppose I shouldn't get the donation from the canes before I find proof, because I'm gonna have to take the proof to them anyway, and I can just do both things at the same time once I'm there. So let's not collect the donation yet. 
At least not from the canes. Uh, but I do need to collect it from younger Vlad, right? Yeah, younger Vlad, who's down here. And Yulia. Yeah, all the places with the, like, yellow palm prints. Yep, these three places. Up here, down here, and over there. Um, well, I guess we should go to Sticky and try to get the evidence th that we need then, and along the way, let's stop at Yulia's. It's too bad the kids don't want to barter with me for food. I guess even they're probably starving. Hold on, you can always take a minute out of your day to play on a slide. Wee, a slide I can't even step on. Okay, cool. That was fun. There's really not that much time left. I keep forgetting the most basic things these days. I've come on Lara Ravel's request. Oh, true. She did say that she needed to buy some provisions, stock up on drinking water and whatnot. Some couriers have offered their services to me already. And then there was this profiteering peddler who visited yesterday. The mind boggles just to think that all this... Hullabaloo was caused by the death of one single man. There is an epidemic hazard. The disease we are about to face is likely to be more terrible than plague, Yulia. One man's death has nothing to do with it. You amaze me, Bachelor. Did you not make fun of the Shabnak rumors yesterday? Mind you, there was some factual basis for all the hearsay. A lot of people don't have the faintest idea of what kinds of life may be found deep in the steppe. They don't even know what kind of people live there, what kind of food they eat, what kind of effigies they make out of clay. Neither do you, to be fair. Still, you don't hesitate a moment to accept a rumor of an epidemic as veritable truth. Is the concept of the disease that much more familiar to you than that of a man-eating abomination made of clay? No. All I did was sensibly evaluate the probability of both versions. Let us get back to more pressing matters, then. Here, take the money. I'm not so eager to give everything I have to alleviate the outbreak, because I've yet to see any proof that the outbreak is real. But I'm well aware of the reality of Lara's drastic circumstances. I will embrace the opportunity, however slim. Hopefully at least part of the money will be used for purposes other than this shelter she has conceived of. Thank you, Yulia. 3,000, oh my god. I bet... I bet that you can ruin your reputation. You're gonna get so much money from all these people and you're gonna buy food and what if you just don't take it? What if you just don't take it to the house? And you just eat the food yourself and spend the money on whatever you want? You could totally do that, but there must. There must be some repercussions for that. So I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna be good. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I am going to go speak with Sticky, who is my guide for this place. My guide for this, this side of town. And hopefully, Sticky will be able to show me which houses are abandoned, and I can examine those and find proof of the plague.